A city is the most complex human creation on earth. Develops and grows from second to second like a living organism and transport is its backbone. Hello, my name is Enoch Sikolia and I am the Kenyan historian. Being the Kenyan historian means I tell stories and do documentaries about Kenya, issues affecting Kenya and Kenyans. And tonight, a beautiful, well done. I feel very happy. Very, very happy. Very, very happy. We begin with a bus rapid transit system. A system that aims to change the transport sector in Kenya and especially in the capital city of Nairobi. Omajina naitwa Paul Mwangi. Mimi uchomea wananchi maiti hapa eneo la Safari Park. This stage in Ategenezo Hapa, then BRT, then stage ya Kusaidia Wanainchi Kusafidi Kwa Ulai, Kwa Ulaisi, Bila Musawakomano wa Maga, Wa Magali, then Naona Takua Laisi Kusafidi, then Kutoka Hapa Safari Park, Kuedea Eneo La, Mjimku Nalobi. At 4 p.m., traffic starts to build up on Nairobi's major artery, that is Thika Highway. It marks the beginning of another rush hour and the end of a free-flowing traffic. As traffic jams continue to pile up across the city, Engineer Francis Gitao, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nairobi Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, begins to inspect the construction of the Bus Rapid Transit System, or simply BRT. At the other end of the upcoming BRT station, Men of Steel are busy putting up a steel frame. It's upon which glass facades will be fixed. The BRT stations, park and ride stations, and bus depots, key infrastructure that will be used to operate Kenya's first BRT. And Thika Road is just one of them. We have Outering Road, we have Mombasa Road, and this Thika Road goes all the way to Rongai. Mombasa Road goes all the way to Kikuyu. If you think about the Line 3 that is coming from Tala, Tadora, Riscos, going all the way to showground and go. The bus rapid transit system is Kenya's most ambitious transport project ever. It seeks getting motorists like me into public buses, significantly reducing the number of personal vehicles on the road. A high-capacity transit system with modern buses running on exclusive lanes at the center of major roads. A beautiful. Well done. I feel eh? very happy. Yeah. Very, very happy. Very, very happy. Housing and Infrastructure Principal Secretary Charles Hinga says the BRT dream will become a reality soon. It is a critical investment to be made in the city of Nairobi. We have got five corridors. We have uh, corridor number one, which is Mombasa Road. We have corridor number two, which is where we are on Thika Road. We have corridor number three, which is, Jogo, uh, which is uh, Juja Road. 
corridor number four, which is Jogo Road, and corridor number five, which is uh, Outer Ring Road. Out of all those uh, corridors, uh, Thicker Road, uh, we chose it uh, as a pilot, a BRT, because it, the amount of work that we need to do uh, in terms of design is much less than the other places. They, we have enough lanes, uh, we have uh, a bit of uh, a median uh, separation space where, for example, where I'm standing, this space here was uh, separating the two, the two sides. The other thing that we looked at is that from where we want to start in Ruiru, we have got foot bridges. So what we are doing essentially is just retrofitting uh, the foot bridges. Nairobi is the heart of Kenya's economy with an airport that makes it a gateway to the East Africa region, the JKIA. The rapid nature of Nairobi's growth and development has led to many challenges. Congestion crisis being a major problem. Five PM one Friday evening. And it begins to rain in the Kenyan capital. In this city, rains during rush hour translate to problems for commuters. We are on thicker highway and suddenly traffic congestion develops. For commuters, it simply means long hours in traffic. Mimi kila siku wana jam kwa barabara na traffic kwa barabara wanakuwa wengi. Sasa kwa sababu ya msongomano wa magari. No one understands this problem more than Constant Cap, an urban planner who stays in the capital. We already have a lot of use of road uh, travel for, as a means of public transport through buses, matatus, uh, boda boda, etc. So our land use is already aligned a lot along the roads. Okay? Uh, and, and if you look, the, the land near, near, nearest to the road tends to be the most expensive. So we, are, we end up with a lot of people living near main roads, you know, Thika Road, Langata Road, etc. The city of Nairobi is growing consistently and currently sprawls over a surface area of 696 kilometers squared. This area size, in combination with the total number of residents, brings us to the current population density, which is now approximately 4,850 residents per square kilometer. This green city in the sun has a history dating back to 1899 and continues to grow as rural residents make their way to the big city for employment opportunities. Over 4.9 million people now live in the capital city, while the metro area has over 6.5 million residents. And moving this huge population borders an nightmare. One of the important things in an urban center is people have to move from home to work, from home to school, uh, from one business to another. And we need a reliable and efficient public transport system. Now within that entire system, you have different modes. You have uh, the commuter rail system. You have the existing uh, 
bus system. Okay. But in order to improve efficiency, we look for an adequate, efficient mode, which is bus rapid transit. So bus rapid transit now kind of brings a combination of uh, road transport, but also exclusivity. So the way you have a train that only moves on tracks, now instead we have a bus that has its own exclusive lane, so that it can move faster, can be on time, can uh, be predictable, but also takes into account other aspects, such as how persons with disability can access this uh, means of transport, how children can safely access this means of transport, how people can have an affordable, okay? So fares can be predictable and not in a manner where when it rains, the fare suddenly becomes double and there are no vehicles because of traffic. As of 2006, Thika Highway served about 60,000 vehicles a day. The number has ballooned to over 150,000 in the last decade. According to various studies, this translates to a growth of about 150%. We are going to have over six, over 5.5 million journeys going to 6 million into the city every morning. And again the same journeys exiting in the evening. We can't afford to do something about this. And uh, if you look at the culture now, anybody coming out of college will be opting to have their own car. Individual motorized actually account for only 13% of people. So can you imagine all these road corridors are congested by 13%? The highway led to a real estate boom as residential and commercial hubs sprang up, marshalling demand for land and property, the north of the capital. Impressive real estate projects came up after the completion of the highway with Garden City, Thika Road Mall, Spa Mall and Juja City as some of the landmarks. In 2012, there were only two public and one private university between Nairobi and Thika. Now, there are more than 11 private universities with campuses along the highway. And many middle-level colleges like NIBS cropping up. This means many more people living along the busy artery and the result, a strained road. I think Namada did a study which they released that shows that we are losing as an economy about 100 billion shillings a year just from congestion. Then not counting the amount of pollution because when those cars are sitting in uh, heavy traffic like you can see here, they are polluting more, you know? And then you're not even talking about the productive hours uh, in a day. How many hours do you lose because of uh, you being stuck in traffic and, uh, and so on and so forth. So overall, this is a program for posterity. This is uh, what is going to elevate us uh, into the kind of life that Kenyans chose for themselves when they put the Vision 2030, where they said by the year 2030, we want a high quality of life. Uh, take somebody who comes from uh, Nyeri in Amatatu. They take maybe an hour, an hour and a half to get to Roiro. And then they take another one and a half hours from Riru to CBD, a distance of 27 kilometers. That doesn't make sense. Wow, this looks beautiful, beautiful. This is the BRT station that appears almost complete. The government is calling it a prototype from which its shape and design will be replicated 
along the corridor and across the city. These builders are creating a system safe for all users, comprehensible by both the drivers and passengers, but more importantly, those with physical impairment. As the bus rapid transit system continues to take shape along Thika Road, Kenyans are concerned. They are asking how people living with disabilities will be able to access the BRT stations located in the middle of the road. We are providing very comfortable stairway that will access the stations. And where we have people with disability, we'll be having an electronic, an electric platform that will be sliding along the steel you're seeing on the side to get people with challenges uh, to the stations comfortably. It's like a sliding platform all the way from down here to the station that will be able to convey uh, people with challenges like disability, pregnant women, uh, old, the aged, and therefore this is a universal access facility. When they're inside the bus, there is a priority seating that is a docking station for a wheelchair, and then we have three seats that are designed for, uh, you know, uh, we call them priority. That is sick people, elderly, and mothers with small children. So that is overall in terms of a design. A system tailored for the needs of the people of Nairobi and the environment. An efficient mass transit system is one of those things to get it right in a fast developing city like Nairobi. Once fully developed, BRT has the ability of transporting over 28,000 people per direction per hour. It will simply become the backbone of Nairobi's transport cage. But how will it work? In most bus rapid transit systems across the world, people access BRT stations via areas designated as zebra crossings. But this will be different in Kenya, where people will be accessing BRT stations via bridges, like this one. Now, this footbridge has got two access. You can use the steps, which is the stairs, and you can use a ramp. The ramp is specifically there for people who uh, live with a disability, and they can be able to access. Then, we're using the median. There are two types of BRT. You can use median uh, BRT, and there is what you call curbside, curbside BRT. Now, curbside BRT, uh, it means it will be at the extreme end uh, of, of, of this road. But if you look at this uh, uh, median, it allows us uh, to be able uh, to avoid issues of, of, uh, of crisscrossing the road when passengers are accessing the road. So if you're using the cab side, when uh, people from the feeder road are getting in, you will have to cut through the BRT lane. You see here we are able to get a, co a dedicated corridor without necessarily having to uh, interfere with the other traffic. So that's the overall design. Construction of the BRT means at least one lane is shut down to traffic at different sections during the day or night. When the BRT is done, the innermost lane on either side of the road will be sealed off to private motorists. Bus-only lanes make for faster travel and ensure that buses are never delayed due to mixed traffic congestion. We are moving from the red line, if that is what you want to hear. Because uh, for a BRT standard, a corridor that is BRT standard, the bus lane is completely demarcated physically from the other um, uh, traffic stream. Therefore, this that we have on Dika Road will be completely demarcated. And uh, it will have regulations such that there will be no conflict in terms of its use and it will be exclusive for the buses. While this will make it easier for those using public transport, the Motorist Association of Kenya says it will create congestion. 
What we are starting with is just the initial phase. We are starting with, say, about 200 buses. Uh, the delivery is going to be 100 buses, another 100 buses. But on Thika Road alone, the demand requires about 600 buses. Uh, so, yes, when we introduce 100 buses and we've taken one lane out, uh, those who will be using private cars will actually find more congestion. But because now we have sufficient buses, one bus carrying 100 people, uh, and because the bus is safe, the fare is affordable, and uh, I have given you a park and ride, you can park your car here and get onto the bus. There is no reason why you, you will be sitting in traffic, uh, because I have given you an option. The problem is where I don't give you an option. I've given you a reliable option. Thinking the old model, then issues of demand, uh, in terms of like the off-peak hours, those are taken care of by what we call a headway. When it's a peak hour, then we have a bus after every three minutes. But when it's off-peak, then we have a bus after 10, 5 or 15 minutes. So scheduling and operational planning is a daily exercise for the people who will be managing these buses. Operational planning is key to optimizing the, the utility value of the investment in the buses. And uh, that is where Namata exists, so that we can do scheduling that actually maximizes on the utility value of the investment. And we'll have the professionals who will be doing that on a daily basis. There will be school days, there will be sport days in Kasarani, there will be rain, there will be many events that sometimes change these operational plans. And that is why we have a public transportation authority that must have that capacity to prescribe the, lights, the right service and maximize on investment. Boarding will be fast, fast. Off-board fare collection will eliminate the delay caused by passengers waiting to pay on board. Like in Dar es Salaam, an electronic card payment system will be employed. It is rapid embarkation and rapid disembarkation. For you to be able to achieve that, there are certain things that you must incorporate in the design. One of them is the width, width of the door. The width of the door must be at least 1,100 millimeters wide. Why is that important? Because for you to be able to get rapid embarkation and rapid disembarkation, you must be able to get people getting in the bus and people getting out of the bus at the same time. That's number one. Number two is the width of the gangway or what you call the aisle inside the bus. It is also uh, designed that people can uh, um, move past each other uh, for purposes of being able to get uh, quickly. Number three is ability to uh, access the bus without necessarily having to use steps because that also reduces time. Another factor is how these stations are being constructed to enable platform level boarding, so no staircases like in Matatus. The system will have state-of-the-art signage system and traffic control system, and BRT buses will be given priority at junctions. Builders have been busy putting together the infrastructure from putting up steel frames for BRT stations, constructing platform areas and the bus depots. Along this corridor, uh, what we are calling the inception phase, we are going to have 15 stations uh, along this uh, corridor. That is from Ruiro uh, to Kenyatta Hospital. That is the inception phase. And Thika Road is presenting challenges that must be dealt with as construction work continues. So, for example, here where I'm standing, we have enough uh, 
uh, space and corridor for us to be able to put up this massive station with, with now, without having to uh, expand the route. When you go to Allsops, as an example, the station there, we've had to expand the road uh, so that we eat a little bit. Uh, so the road is the uh, orientation is changing a little bit because the the median space was not enough uh, for you to be able to build. Uh, then there are other places where, uh, uh, as you get to KU, um, where the station actually uh, uh, one is going to be on the other side because there's there's some places where there's simply no median space that has been left. Again, the design has been done in such a way that we are going to, to cater. Because remember, this road, when it was designed from the beginning, it was not designed as a BRT road. So we are having to retrofit. This is where we are having engineering, good engineers who can be able to design for purpose uh, based on the condition of the ground. When you go to Outer Ring Road, when we do it, because it was designed with a BRT in mind, you will find that the corridor that was left, uh, we, we don't have to do like what we're doing in all sops uh, or, or what we're doing in, in Roy Sambu uh, because they, it was already designed for BRT.